Hi, my name is Detroit Miracle, and I am here to talk about the consumer mind control. And these are methods of a big method used to get people to spend, purchase, and buy things in excess. And a lot of those things the people do not necessarily need but they are made to feel like they must have those things nevertheless. Now I'm not talking about basic necessity things that we all need, such as soap, water, toothpaste, mouthwash, yeah, toothpastes, tiles, bathrobes, underwear, you know, basic clothing that are not so fashionable. I mean, things that pertain to clothing lines or products which has a name brand on it and which has been subliminally imprinted into our conscious sets or our mindsets. So we feel like, wow, we got to run, get that. And then it, it, the many more people that buy those things that we are aware of, we really want those things. For example, if one person is wearing, just say a a FUBU tracksuit or a pair of Air Jordans and, and not many more are not wearing those and even do not give mention to those name brands and nobody wants them at all and no one feels like they must have them but if you see a million people wear those things and talk about those things and act crazy over those things then um everybody or a majority are going to feel like they must have those things. Like, hey, I got to get those. I got to get those new Air Jordans. They stylish. In fact, I got to go get every pair from the past since he first entered the NBA. And, hey, I like Air Jordans. I think they're sleek. They're, they're nice, comfortable basketball shoes. I had a pair. But when you see people obsessing over products such as that, then, wow, then, it's because many, many more obsess over those products. And remember, people are conditioned within the consumer mind control thing to be followers. Yes, when I mention things like mind control, that means they look at the masses as, as uh, followers or slaves in which they could manipulate into doing whatever they want them to do, such as when it comes to spending, buying, and purchasing products. Yes, that is the case. If, if it was not the case, then why do you think there are commercials all over the place that tell you what you should buy, to tell you what you need to get? And well, commercials are good to an extent if it makes you aware of things that are new and innovative, such as Blu-ray players, DVDs, flat screen TV sets, and even design perfumes and colognes. You're like, wow, I'm gonna go out and get that. That's cool. But um, if you see a case where, let's say somebody has 50 pair of this, 50 pair of that, 300 watches, 50 cars, you know, a, a million different clothes in their closets, then they are victims of the consumer mind control because the consumer mind control thing is set up to influence people to want to obtain many things in excess. It's not simply a mind control form used to influence those to go out and buy one or a few products, but rather go out and buy as much of it as you possibly can buy or much of it as they could possibly buy in excess and then even when they have more than enough of what they need they still want more than that that's how the consumer mind control thing works you're not going to just be content with this even if you get a lot of the things you want chances are you're going to want much more than that and many more because you know you have you've been conditioned that way to be accustomed to having a whole lot of things and you know, you heard that um, saying when somebody hoards things in abundantly that they don't really necessarily need. And then when you heard another expression, this person is a collector. They are collecting 
very beautiful, wonderful things. Now, look, the hoarders aren't so much as victims to the mind control or the consumer mind control because they get nice things, a whole bunch of, or they might get things that are sentimental to them or things that they find a liking to that others don't necessarily appreciate because those items do not have name brand or they're not from popular product placements. But when you see a collector and they, that collector has a whole bunch of name brand things, they might have, a, let's say, valuable, decadent art, beautiful furniture, a million billion clothes, a lot of jewelry, and, and people of the masses will show more appreciation to those type of people who are labeled collectors because they're buying into the whole thing regarding assess and spending, buying and purchasing and accumulating as much popular product placements of name brand items that many, many feel that they must have because of that conditioning. Because if it was no consumer mind control thing, then we would not have anything to place a value over. We would not know, or to say we would deem things that are nice because they they would be very special to us. Like if you walk somewhere and go into a store, there's no consumer mind control. You're walking into the store, you see something, oh, okay, I like that, I'm gonna buy it. You know, that that's a case where you're not a victim of the consumer mind control. But if you walk into a, a, a store and see, hey, look, this is Gucci, this is Louis Vuitton, this is Versace, I gotta have that. And, you are most definitely a victim of the consumer mind control and you have been victimized over the course of your entire life. And you notice when each, with each generation or each era products and things change and so forth, like they, they might go a different direction with it. Like for one moment, something is extremely popular then the next minute it ain't. Cause I've heard this, Hey man, you gonna wear that that old busted feeler track suit, man? That's that went out of style in the '90s, in the, in the early '90s, in fact. But if you had one of them in like the 1980s, you was walking around with that feeler track suit. You was the man. You were like, yeah, I'm styling. You know, all the pretty girls would be, um, you know, giving you shout outs. Like, yeah, man, I'm doing it. I got my fe that might be the only track suit to your name. You might have saved and scraped up all that you had to just to buy that, but but once you put that on, you the man. And they like, especially at the height of that particular product where it is most popular. But if you wear it when it's out of style, and I keep hearing this, so much things that have been in style at one point or another are now out of style. Then if you wear them now, or buy them, people will be like, well, you're gonna wear that, you're gonna buy that. That's out of style, man, that's played. Now, with people that say that, they're victims of consumer mind control, and they are proven most acceptable to slave conformity that way. Yes, it's true. So people think about all that. Don't let, don't let whoever makes these products and control these, um, commercial outlets influence y'all to go to spend all your money on these things because y'all feel y'all have to in order to be accepted in life by y'all peers or persons close to y'all or in, or to be accepted by people in general go out and buy the things that y'all like that y'all find a need for and that y'all want and not necessarily not necessarily because they have a popular product name on it well, this is Detroit Miracle. If y'all approve of this serious message, y'all are more than welcome to subscribe to my channel. And please leave a like in the like section and a comment in the comment section. Peace out.